This is Africa Tea at the Global Health Cutlist Summit, and with me is Dr. Will Ngua. Welcome to Africa to You. I'm Vivian Burchell, your host. In this episode, we will be talking about uh, the Harvard Global Health Cutlist Summit. Cancer is the growth of abnormal cells that damage or interfere with the body's organs. Cancer treatment may include chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery, and is often unaffordable, especially to people in low and middle income countries. It has major impact on society emotionally, financially, physically, and environmentally. Led by Dr. Wilfred Ngua, the Global Health Cut List at Harvard Medical School's Dana Ferber, Harvard Cancer Center, and the Brigham and Women's Hospital is dedicated to catalyzing high-impact international collaborations and initiatives to eliminate global health disparities with a main focus on cancer and other non-communicable diseases. The Global Health Catalyst hosts an annual summit at the Harvard Medical School with satellite conferences in Europe and Africa and has collaborated with other universities to launch, create an online education system such as uh, Global Oncology University and the Comprehensive Cancer Center in the cloud, which is known as C4, to increase access to world-class cancer care, research and education. This year, the three-day summit attracted over 400 participants, including medical doctors, global health leaders, advocates, diaspora leaders, sports personalities, and politicians, especially from low- and middle-income countries, to break down barriers and create sustainable partnerships to impact global health. The speakers were from different countries and sectors. Over the next few weeks, I will be bringing to you highlights of the conversations held during this year's summit. In this episode, I will be highlighting the keynote addresses by the president of Dana Faber Cancer Institute, Dr. Laurie Glimcher, and also the keynote address by the director of the Global Health Catalyst Summit, Dr. Wilfred Ngua. I hope you enjoy it. So now I'm inviting the director of the Harvard Global Health Catholic Dr. Ngoa, for the opening ceremony. Thank you. Let's give a hand to Bashkin again. When you see him around, please, he's the guy who's put together this whole program. Let's give him a hand. All right, so um, I'll just make a few remarks about the, the Global Health Catalyst. Uh, Program, and then I will uh, hand over to the president of the Power to make the welcome. So uh, we are very delighted that you're here. This program has been growing over the, uh, the next three years. You're probably going to have about 400 people come and go. Um, but they are coming from very different countries, you know, across the world. And I don't think these can reflect the different languages of the diversity of this. Uh, and so, what is the Global Health Catalyst? So this is really a program to eliminate global health disparities. And if there's one word that you can, if you forget everything, 
that happens in this conference, and you want to think about one word, it's spread, it's about collaborations. Right? So you have people uh, from government leaders to somebody who is not you know, a student, whoever, from different sectors, who collaborate to make things happen, to eliminate these barriers. And so I actually really like this picture here. Uh, this is done because the, 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 the summit is growing every year, so now we actually have something in, in Heidelberg, Germany, who are one of the partners now. And so last year, it's a really good MOU that was signed uh, with the university here to kind of advance this kind of experience. And then on this right hand side, this picture kind of captures where you have a government leader, also Nyongo who is here, uh, and from, from Kenya, you know, with the, with the student who has been so inspired that she's gone into cancer work. Uh, and now, now she's, you know, her life has changed because of that. Um, so I always mention that, you know, this uh, event, this summit, the Global Health Catalyst was seed funded by the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Studies at Harvard. And then following that, you know, the Nepal and Brigham have provided funding for it. And now they're growing number of institutions, uh, and external funding agencies. And now we have partner universities, the University of Pennsylvania, Oxford University, uh, University of Heidelberg, who are providing funding for supporting this collaboration initiative. Um, and then I would like to point out one of the initiatives that was launched last year. Uh, the Comprehensive Cancer Center in the cloud. So imagine that you can take the data from a cancer center and put that in the cloud, where everybody can have access to it. That's really the essence of this, because if you are born in a low and middle income country and you have cancer, um, you know you may not have access to any care. If you are born down Longwood Medical Avenue right here, if you are not treated, then if you are not, you know, if you're not cured, then you will never meant to be cured, because there's a lack of access in the United States. And so, uh, so we're going to be hearing a little bit about this uh, comprehensive cancer center in the cloud, how we can increase access within this summit. Um, and then, you know, the cool thing here also is about we have the idea of when it's comprehensive because we have both education components, we support care, uh, we also have um, research, but quite a very important aspect of it is outreach. So you usually think what was started it was always just doctors talking to each other, but now we actually have industry executives, we have government leaders who are coming. How can we work together to reduce disparities and increase access to cancer care? So that's the essence of this event. Uh, and now we actually have funding commitments of about $7 million to launch something in the direction of phytomedicines, which has been coming up uh, for the past summits. And so during this event, uh, we're going to have a chance to to expand more on this initiative. Um, so I got to the last thing I'll mention is that yes, so we've actually done a lot of uh, impact, a lot of impact already. Uh, some of the publications that are coming out of this are really shaping, helping shape the emerging field of global health. Um, and um, you know, we've been able to support hundreds of training for hundreds of cancer oncology professionals in low and middle income countries. And uh, we're supporting cancer centers that are being uh, established in Africa primarily. And now we have people from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, who are looking for that same kind of support. And so we're kind of growing uh, here beyond that. All right, so I'm going to end by saying, uh, please, indulge me one more time. Uh, I just want to highlight the issue of collaboration. And what I usually would like to say is that uh, we come from very different backgrounds. And people from government to you know, lay students. What I would like to do is that when you come here, remember that the key word is collaborate. And so I would like to ask that everybody stand up and then you tell them your neighbor that let's collaborate. Okay? So you say let's collaborate. That's really what we want to do through this song. Let's collaborate. <laughs>
And then uh, so we're going to welcome President Laurie Glincher, who is also the director of the Jane Barber Howard Center. Laurie. Good morning and welcome to all of you. Um, we're delighted to host this wonderful Global Catalyst Health uh, Summit at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and to be joined by such an esteemed group of ambassadors and ministers representing countries around the world, particularly from low and middle income countries, the diaspora organization leaders who are breaking down barriers to create a stronger pipeline of innovation, visionary leaders in cancer research and biotech. We have some editors of our leading medical journals here and cancer advocates who are making their voice heard to push for better opportunities to improve health outcomes for patients and their families no matter where they live, no matter what their zip code or country is. And finally, um, all the young people here, you are the future. You are our future. You're the next generation of scientists and advocates and physicians, and we are counting on all of you. Well, as you know, at Dana-Farber, we are singularly focused on cancer. We live, eat, and breathe cancer. That is our mission. And our mission is embraced by every single faculty member and employee and staff at Dana-Farber. We not only discover new treatments for cancer, we're a very highly research-oriented institution, but we provide the very, very best cancer care, uh, I believe, uh, in the world. And coming up with new strategies to treat cancer, because although the last decade and a half has been a revolutionary time for cancer, with changes that, that include the ability to target genetic mutations in cancers and to activate and ignite our own immune system to fight off cancers, we still have much to do to save lives. This is a tremendously exciting time in cancer, as I've said, with targeted therapies and immunotherapy and other innovation. And we, I'm, I'm hugely optimistic that over the next decade, we will not only continue to make wonderful new discoveries, but we will be on an exponential curve in learning how to treat cancers that have previously proved to be intractable. So the way I like to put it is that we are at the end of the beginning of new cancer treatments. And we want to do everything we can to extend the reach of innovation and expertise that we have globally to help empower cancer care and cancer research everywhere and bring better treatments to more patients. I think we're all in this room united by the belief that everyone deserves to have the very best cancer care, no matter where they live. Everybody should have access to the latest cancer treatments and access to excellent and compassionate care. And so we need to make progress toward this goal now. Cancer is growing at an alarming rate globally. While the mortality rates from cancer have decreased significantly by around 20% over the last quarter of a century, according to the World Health Organization, nevertheless, the incidence of cancer is increasing, and it's increasingly affecting younger people. Cancer is the second leading cause of death globally. It's responsible for at least 10 million deaths from cancer in 2018. About 70% of those deaths occur in low and middle income countries where just in one in five countries, only one in five of those countries have the data they need to drive cancer policy. Low-income uh, countries in particular lack the resources to diagnose and treat cancer. In fact, just 26% of low-income countries report having pathology services 
generally available to the public compared to 90% of high-income countries. And the economic cost of cancer globally is staggering, estimated at roughly $1.6 trillion in 2010, and far more than that today. So this is a global health crisis that we have to confront by harnessing the full potential and capabilities of the global health community, which all of you represent. Tapping experts in discovery and cancer care, as well as experts across the healthcare center. And that's why this gathering is so important, because it brings together some of the brightest mind, visionary leaders, and the strongest and most passionate voices to push for new advances in cancer care and discovery to both raise the quality of cancer care in more places and to make that care more available. And all of you will make a difference. All of you will raise us up as a world. Now I know how steep this challenge may seem because it is an enormous challenge, especially as you see it from the front lines of this crisis where you see firsthand the dread and the worry of patients and their families. And I understand that sometimes we all feel, and you in particular, can feel a sense of impossibility and change in the course of cancer. But I believe that we cannot be deterred. And I have hope for the future because of the advancements we're making in cancer research. And I have hope for the future because of the determination of everyone in this room in the words of Nelson Mandela, it always seems impossible until it's done. Together, we will change the cancer landscape and we will save lives. But just as cancer does not wait, neither can we. We have to make progress quickly. I know we can do this just one year ago this, and this, at this very event. As, as Will said, we helped launch the world's premier cloud-based comprehensive cancer center, C4, an award-winning program platform which places the innovation and expertise of the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Harvard Cancer Center, in the cloud to open up access to education, training, and research anywhere in the world. And already, C4 has helped train hundreds of cancer health professionals in low- and middle-income countries through lectures from Dana Farmer, Harvard Cancer Center, and faculty members from partner institutions. So I look forward to building on that success. This is just the beginning, and it's just one example of what we can do, what we can accomplish by collaboration. And I like to, to quote Harry Truman. I think actually it was Winston Churchill who said, it's amazing how much you can get done if you don't care who gets the credit for it. So when leading scientists, physicians, public health experts, government leaders, and advocates collaborate freely and openly, which you are all doing, and work together for a common goal, equipped with the support and resources we need, and we don't have all the resources we need, and we have to keep on advocating for those resources, I think there's no limit to what we can do. All of you really inspire me by the deep commitment that you sh have shown and that fills the room that we're in right now. And I believe strongly that we can do an amazing, we can do amazing progress, accomplish amazing things together. So let's harness all of the energy and talent we have in this room and work towards a healthier, cancer-free future for all. Thank you. I hope you have learned something new about the Harvard Global Health Cutlass Program. For more about Africa, her people, and projects, uh, you can email me at africa to you vivian at gmail.com or visit our blog at africatoyou.org. You can also watch our episodes on the Action TV YouTube channel. Thank you for watching Africa to You. Till next time.